Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the whole special channel and this second episode on the Grizzly 7945 G 7945 drill press. Today we're going to be upgrading the bearings. I already kind of disassembled this thing in, in part on the head up here. Uh, getting the quill out is essentially just uh, taking off the clock spring over here. You just very carefully take those counter those jam nuts loose and um, back those off, take them off, and then slit, let the clock spring unwind. But very carefully, if you you know let it zip, it'll it will probably break. So you want to be very careful. Um, I already took the spindle and the quill out. Um, now it's time to put in new bearings. It's pretty much just a you know like I say taking out the the clock spring and the uh, the handle over here that's all it is to get the the quill out now the top bearings for the um, belt pulley up there those are separate that's what those 6203s are for and so we'll go into that next but um, yeah we'll just go ahead and slip on the new bearings um, like I say I already got this out um, I've kind of boogered it up a little bit tapping out the old bearings now the one thing you're going to have to do is reinvent you're going to have to uh, get a new snap ring the snap ring on here is so brittle it broke um, the other thing that broke on here is the um, gizmo for the depth stop uh, so the other thing that broke is the uh, depth stop so i'm going to upgrade that i'm going to make a new one and send it over and then uh, ryan can change it out at his leisure. He's going to be using this machine later on down the line. But, I mean, this thing just broke off by uh, tightening up the bolt uh, to the point where it would actually, you know, seat. And so what they've done, here I'll give you a close-up, is they've, uh, let me get this thing to focus here. So this is in the ring and they drilled all the way through and cut threads into it and weakened this to the point where it had to break. Uh, There's just no other way around it. This is the part here. This is the depth stop and uh, it just broke off right up here. This here just sheared right off. I mean, um, it's just weakened to the point where it has to break. There's no other option for it really um, they drilled this hole in such a bad spot right here next to the ear uh, instead of drilling three um, they drilled four and put this thing in a spot where there's a lot of torque on the ring and so it just snaps it right off so be careful with that when you buy this machine <coughs> so that you don't go and do the same thing i did and break this thing off so anyway, um, let me bring the camera around here, and uh, we'll show you the. Here's the the quill spindle or the quill, and here's the spindle. And so we'll bring all this around so you guys can get a better view. So like I said, I've already tapped the the bearings out. I use the 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 spindle here to kind of uh, tap those out. Um, you need a, a separate rod something that's a little bit more forgiving than the, the spindle it got boogered up here on the on the edge I mean this it really doesn't affect anything but it just looks bad so I'm gonna go ahead and take my file here kinda and of course it this could have been already boogered up before it even came out of the machine it doesn't look like it was machined all that well The places where this thing took the damage really wasn't all that critical. And like I say, I brought snap rings, so I've got some of those. So this bottom one takes the larger one here, which is the... This is the 6202. And this is the 6202. And so we just slip it on there, try to get it started, and then we'll commence to tapping this on here. Yeah, 
Uh, let me find something here that's going to fit. You don't want to uh, pound on this outer race. You want to, you know, if you're going to pound something like this in, you're going to have to counter this this inner race so that you don't damage the ball bearings itself. So let me uh, see what we can do here. I've got various sizes of wrenches. This 16 is a little bit too small or too big. This 15 here will work well. So let's go ahead and lay that here. Take a wood block. And if you have a wood block with a knot in it, the knot is about the, the best place to, to lay on to the, onto the work and then give it a smack. Now you don't want to lose the bearings there. So you guys get the idea. Let me find a good spot to uh, get this thing seated and I'll bring you guys back when that's done. So now that we've got that seated, um, time to stick it back in here. And just pop it in there. This thing just, it's not in there real tight. So just kind of give it a light tap. And that's all there is to it. And then, uh, of course, you need somewhere to support the other side. And then we'll go ahead and put in the other bearing. Now, again, if you're using, if you're going to replace the bearings in these, do not buy Chinese bearings. Um, SKF does have a presence in China and they do sell uh, Chinese bearings. Don't buy them. These are made in Italy. The Italians know how to work steel. Um, they've been doing it a lot longer than just about anybody else I know, so they uh, definitely know how to handle this stuff. So then all you do is you just tap this guy back in there. Normally it's best to have a piece of pipe so that you can bang on this and, and get it seated. Um, you can do it the other way too from the other end. Um, unfortunately the pallet here just doesn't offer me much in ways of working convenience. So we're just going to kind of improvise. Now this is probably going to slip out the other side. And it did, so we just got to pop it back the other way. It's kind of a pain in the ass, but you get the drift. Improv is half the is half your life. Okay, this is where the drift punches are going to come in, probably. Um, again, I'm going to have to take this to a more stable surface and uh, work it until we get it get it seated. So, anyway, like I say, the best thing is to have a piece of pipe or just take an off cut and. Turn it to where that'll slip over this with more than just a slip fit, or better say, uh, and it doesn't come in contact with the inner race, just the outer race. So you'll have to make a specialty tool to seat this. And then uh, in something similar over here where you actually, uh, you can take a piece of pipe and just slip it over and then uh, tap it on that way. And that works too. So, and then... Uh, you definitely want to have contact on both the inner and outer races at the same time so you don't damage the, the ball bearing inside. But anyway, let me get this thing uh, seated and we'll come back. So to get at the spindle bearings up top, uh, well, I shouldn't say the spindle bearings, I should say the uh, pulley bearings because uh, they're up here in the top. you got to pull off the pulley. Uh, be careful. This is the left-hand thread up top. I'll show you later. Um, because it's not in frame right now. And then you got to pull the grub screws out left and right. And then there's a four millimeter uh, roll pin in here and you just push it into the center. And then you can pull this head right off the center or off the shaft here, I should say. Uh, let me see 
with my drift punches. So we'll go ahead and tap this out. There we go. I heard it fall in there. It's in here somewhere. Uh, here we go. And then of course you got to pull the switch off and all that good jazz. Otherwise you'll you'll never get it off. Oops, I forgot to loosen the screws up here. Uh, there's two screws up here in the housing for the uh, for the belt pulley. So let me get those off there, and I'll bring you guys back when we get this head off of here. So they actually did a, a little bit of thinking here. In order to get your bearings out of here, all you have to do is take this grub screw out. Here's a little eight millimeter grub screw with a point on it. And so you take that out and then you just take out the whole pulley assembly. Because I was wondering how I was going to get these bearings out of here. Without destroying the, the snap ring, you got a 17 millimeter snap ring right here, and so that's got to come off. And boy, these bearings are stiff. They're stiff as all get out. So, and here's the ring where the retainer, the spacer ring. Uh, this should be out of brass, but it looks like it's made out of plastic. So we'll take this snap ring off. Hopefully, not break it. I have an assortment of snap rings, so looks like we're back to pounding on things. So let me get the pallet, put this on the pallet, drive this out, and uh, we'll change the bearings. But this is the spindle assembly or the uh, pulley assembly up here, and so this should, like I say, the upgrade of the bearings. This is a 6203. So, yeah, this should be a fairly straightforward little swap here once this rings, once this uh, shaft is out. This is the pulley shaft, it's a tapered shaft, and so you gotta, gotta watch out for it. Left hand thread, so when you're taking this thing off, make sure you're not tightening it up and then that you're going the right way. I was trying to tighten this thing up the first go around and couldn't figure out why it wasn't loosening, so then I went the other way, and sure enough, it's a left hand thread, so. Anyway, I'll bring you guys back when I get these bearings swapped out. Well, folks, that's a wrap for this episode. Um, I unfortunately had to give up on uh, taking out the two upper bearings of the pulley. Uh, it just takes a press. I don't have one at my disposal here. So uh, if I tried to get them out, I'd wind up beating the spindle to death. And uh, I don't want to damage it. And so I just decided to be more prudent just to allow the bearings to remain in there. When I come back later, uh, I can always take it to a machine shop where I, you know, uh, can get, have access to a press and press them out and then do, do the job, the credit it needs, or better say, the justice it needs in order to um, be able to do the thing correct. Because, like I say, I don't want to damage the spindle. It's Chinese steel. Um, anybody who's ever worked with it knows what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so don't want to press the issue too much and then ding it all up and then have to make a new part. Um, I should have taken measurements off the, the spindle uh, as I had it out, but I kind of, I, I don't have the measuring tools here I need to do that with. But, um, you know, this is a Jacobs Taper 3 or 33 on this, on the spindle stub here. So... I'm going to have to probably just bite the bullet and buy the Albrecht chuck that uh, for, uh, I think they're 300 something. But anyway, <clears throat> all in total, um, the two lower spindle bearings, they worked out just fine. Those are the ones that get used or abused the hardest because of the, the uh, loads they take. And so those were the more, more critical ones. Um, you know, to pull the head off it wasn't all that big a deal. Like I say, these two grub screws and then this drift pin, pop it out, head comes right off. Of course, then you're going to have to take off the, the top cover, 
switch and all that to be able to access the, the head. And then once you got that off, the grub screw, and you can just tap the, the pulley bearings right out. Um, you don't even really need to, to take the head off to get the pulley bearings off. Uh, essentially, all you'd have to do is um, pull the grub screw over on the other side and uh, take the belt off with the lid up. And if you had a slide hammer, you could probably pop it right off. Um, that'd be another alternative or a puller or something like that. You could probably just take it and pop it right off. You'd have to run the spindle down here, uh, the quill, to get you know out of the way of the of the the spindle in the center. But other than that, um, you could pull this with pull the <clears throat> the top bearings without having to take the whole machine apart. So anyway. Hope you guys were able to glean a little useful information out of this uh, little video here. Sorry it wasn't more detailed and um, more to the point. Um, a lot of the stuff you guys have seen a million times, and so it really doesn't pay to belabor the point. But um, it definitely pays to upgrade the bearings and the hardware in these Chinese-made machines uh, just for the simple fact that, one, the hardware in there, the screws and bolts, are usually grade fives are you know uh, really soft and they don't hold up to any kind of abuse at all and so that's why I went to a grade 12 um, they're a lot harder it seems like overkill but when you stop and think about it um, it's not really so that's one of the reasons for that and then of course the bearings uh, again uh, Chinese bearings are notoriously bad and so I didn't really feel like having to battle those later on. That's why I went to the SKF, made in Italy, uh, by far a better quality bearing than uh, what came with the machine. So anyway, um, if you have any thoughts, questions, critiques, suggestions, by all means, put them in the comment section below. Uh, every little bit of interaction is a humongous booster for the channel. Um, the, for the YouTube algorithm and then it recommends the channel more so if you can find it in your heart to you know kind of give this thing a you know some love by making a comment and all that good jazz by all means too it's much appreciated and I don't mind I read all the comments and uh, the ones that you know are questions I do try due diligence and uh, answer them as best I can um, so with that out of the way, thanks for stopping by, thanks for watching, and we'll hope to see you all again soon in the next video.